Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We're not starting from Hollywood today. We're starting from Orange County. Yep, I decided to take Breck up on his offer and we came down to uh, hang out in Orange County for a couple of days. And today, he and I are gonna go off and do some vlogging. And I decided I'm gonna take him since we found out there's a Jollibee here in Orange County. I'm gonna treat him to Jollibee today. So what we're gonna do for the, uh, the joyous part of our vlog is we're gonna head over to Chapman University and in the basement of one of the libraries there, they have a museum to the great Huelhauser, the man you know from visiting or California Gold. He's a total institution in doing this kind of content, going around showing people great things that they need to know about. Real pioneer in that. So we're gonna go explore his museum today and see what else happens. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And look who's over there hanging out in the sun. Yeah, we decided to come up here pretty early so he could uh, kick it in the sunshine. See, he doesn't mind it so much here because he can just get up and walk away into the shade whenever he wants. How you doing, Jaw? Oh, train's coming through. So I gave Breck this shirt, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and he never wore it. And then he brought it out and showed me, and I was like, oh, wow, dude, I want that. Breck is hooking me up with some breakfast before we go and check out his shirt. Folsom Prison. How's it going, Breck? All right, how you doing? I'm good. We're, uh, we're heading off to see um, Huell Hauser's exhibit today. Are you a fan of Huell Hauser? Did you I watch am, I am. Yeah, I do remember watching his show. Awesome, so this will be a good one. I don't know how much of it we're gonna make you guys a part of, but uh, I have to, uh, well, I don't have to, but I want to uh, tie-dye a shirt for my mom. So we are going to uh, be doing a couple of tie-dye shirts today. Well, we have entered the campus of Chapman University and we're gonna follow the directions painted right here on the steps that say Leatherby Libraries. That's kind of cool. Their Chapman Sea is the same as the Cincinnati Red Sea. Well, this is not Huell Hauser, but I'm a fan of Albert Schweitzer, so it's kind of cool to see this. Search and see whether there is not some place where you may invest your humanity. Well, if you can take your eyes off Breck for a second and look behind him, you'll see we are at Leatherby Libraries. I do believe we have found it. Well, the first thing we see entering the museum, right at the bottom of the stairs, are personal items from Hulhauser's house. And these are all found art items. These are all things that he, they said he had an affinity for industrial uh, pieces and he would buy them and have them repurposed into furniture for his house. And then if you look over here at this table, look at the, uh, the under part of the table. It's like a cauldron almost. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Very cool. These were donated to the library in 2011. Here we've entered the actual start of the exhibit right down this hall and you're greeted with this little quote by Huell. A hundred years from now, long after people have forgotten me and my television show, the words California Gold will mean those students who are the future of the world. Huell Hauser. And there he is, right there in a super bloom, probably out in Lancaster. California Gold himself, Huell Hauser. Here, as we go down the entire hallway, they have pieces from inside of Huell's house. Art pieces that were, you know, like I said, these found object art. So we'll take a quick walk through here so you can see what you would have seen inside his house. And that's what we all know him for. That's amazing. Check out this quote. 
All you have to do is open your eyes and have a sense of adventure and go out and find them yourself. I'm convinced that if you put a spotlight on any person or any subject and you're genuinely interested in it, you can make it something people will enjoy watching. I 100% agree, Huel. Now along this wall you'll see they do an entire lifeline of Huel's life from early childhood to college to the 1970s when he started out in Nashville. You can see here what a young Huel Hauser looked like. And then down here it says, I look at it as if I'm doing things that a lot of people would like to do themselves and can enjoy through me doing it. Again, I totally agree. Now you can see why Huel was such a big inspiration for vlogging, vloggers like us. Now here you can see they used to have Huel Hauser on the milk bottles. Huel Hauser's California Gold. And I actually found one of those in the thrift store. I found one at Goodwill one year and gave it to my friend Kevin as a birthday present. In a city with an influx of people that are so different, if there is a challenge to local TV, it's to make us not afraid of these people, to show them as they are. And here you can see he moved on from Nashville to New York in 1980. And then over to KCBS and KCET. That's where his real curiosity seems to have started. And then 1990 was the beginning of California's Gold. And here you can see Huel out on an adventure right here. And it says, I never envisioned visiting an abalone nursery before, but here we are. Boy, that's a whole lot of abalone. Now here they have a section on in front of the camera and behind the camera. And if you remember, we went out to Pink's and I did a vlog where Adam the Woo and I went and met this cameraman, Louie. One of the nicest guys ever, he wrote a book. So we went out to meet him and here's his camera. There's the camera that he filmed. It says, the camera and microphone were used for 15 years by Huel and his cameraman to film over 300 episodes of California Gold. And they, it was great if you ever, um, if you ever hear the interview that we did with Louie, he tells us about how he just became like a total pro about the way he would position himself next to his guest so that they could avoid shadows and things. He would put his, basically put his arms around the people and then just move them <laughs> when he needed them to. Here's some pictures of them out on location. And then here we have one of their schedules. You can see here, go shoot on August 6th, Watts, uh, B2, Pasadena, Classic Arts, Glendale. And then you go down here, the Salmon Festival, Urban Ranch, Cabrillo Ship. Just, I mean, it's so cool. It's, I mean, <laughs> Hearst Castle. Oh, and of course, we had to go to Muscle Beach, didn't we? Oh, check out down here, Watts Towers. So here we just noticed that this, uh, this shooting assignment schedule thing on here, uh, you notice like the contact is listed as unknown. Um, it says directions, Huel will provide, address, only, known only by Huel. I mean, like, <laughs> definitely like, tells you a lot about him and then it's great to read this because it says he believed that television relied too much on elaborate productions. Huel would set up the shots ahead of time in consultation with his cameraman, let the interviewee roughly know what he planned to ask, and then he would plow forward using very simple introductions and transitions between shots. This production process guaranteed that his shows had an active feel and the lack of fuss sets his interview subjects at ease to discuss things and tell their stories without feeling overwhelmed. So take a look at this. This is Huel's office. I'll show you the office and then I'll read you how they describe it because what you'll notice is that uh, they say that he did all of the California gold from this office. And you can see he has uh, folders with the project name where he went 
and then he would keep notes on that yellow pad but they said he did all the reviewing of all of the uh, edits and everything through that monitor and through that tape deck and then this uh, this piece of art right here this sheet metal was one of his favorites so he had that there of course he had the uh, California state flag over there in the corner now let's check out what he has down in here And if you notice right there, it says California Gold. Here you can see Hules got an award from the United Nations, from being the United Nations Day Chairman. So this little placard here says, Huel used this office during the production run of California Gold. It reflects Huel's love for antiques and found art. Hanging on the wall to the right is an example of found art that Huel used to decorate his homes as well as his office. One of his favorites, it's simply a sheet of printed metal that has rusted into an inter interesting pattern. Huel put together the episodes of California Gold with his monitor and video deck. His tools were simply a copy of the episode list, a production list, and a yellow pad. He reviewed the footage from the previous day and on the yellow pad recorded the time codes of the shots in the sequence that he wanted. His editors cut the episode while Huel sat behind him making corrections as needed. And then it says that the, uh, the rack of manila envelopes was specifically ideas that he hadn't shot yet that we uh, we were going to see in future episodes. Now you see here that they have two pillars right in the center of the museum. One is of all the amazing places and the other is of the amazing characters that he met. And here you can see much like Breck's shirt, he went to Folsom Prison, we have Mono Lake, Coachella, wouldn't you have loved to see him at Coachella? The Upside Down House. Now let's check out some of the mementos in this case without me being in there. You can see the, uh, the metal nameplate of him, his name. Little camera owned by Huel's parents. California Gold stitched. And then that's from Nyland Stadium. There's Huel skydiving. That's pretty classic. That's the uh, that's from his trip to the famous Bullock's Tea Room, Bullock's Department Store, and then that is from the Golden Gate Bridge. And then of course Huel's California Gold Cow, and one of the uh, the milk bottles I told you about. Now this is really cool. These are scripts from him being on The Simpsons. Signed out to him by Matt Groening. And over here, the cast. Pretty neat. Sheet music for I Love You California. Little C's candy cart. That's Amazing Hat. <laughs> and a little Felipe from Felipe's, which we haven't went to yet. And then this guy right here is a 1996 Olympic torch relay that... Um, or Olympic torch that he will do the relay with through Los Angeles. How cool is that? Now here we go. This is going to be exciting. Now we really get to see like some really cool stuff from his house. You can see here all of his archives. God, think of how much easier YouTube has made it. <laughs> you don't have to have a factory full of all this stuff anymore. You can just put it on a terabyte, a couple of terabyte hard drive. Now here is a crossroads footage hosted by Huel Hauser. Here's another award for the crossroads footage. And there's Huel. And then the reason that he donated his stuff to Chapman, it says, is because from the moment he stepped onto the campus, he had a special place in his heart for Chapman University. Um, he filled an Old Town Orange episode here in 2007, and after the episode aired, the president of Chapman wrote to Huell, um, expressing his disappointment that the university had been left out of the episode. And so, uh, you know, he said that uh, Huel, in typical fashion, called him and said hi. 
Hugh Hauser here. Tell me about this campus of yours. And the campus president became friends with Huel, and next thing you know, he was a guest on the campus anytime he wanted. Here it says when I first walked onto Chapman, it was an immediate transformational experience for me. I knew this is where I wanted to leave my legacy. And there's uh, Huel and Louie together in San Francisco. There's Huel with the torch in 1996. Great outfit, dude. Classic. Now, believe it or not, Huel Hauser was actually his real name. That wasn't a show business name. It was, uh, it was a name that his parents created by combining their names. His dad's name was Harold, and his mom's name was Jewel. So, he became Huel. Now look at the massive library that he left. All of his research materials and books and various things. Oh, hey, look at that. John Bankston, that's who sent me an email after I made my uh, Buster Keaton vlog. Here's one of Huel's hats, California's water. Now I'm almost wishing I would have kept that <laughs> milk bottle I gave to Kevin. <laughs> there are some uh, of the Russian dolls of Mikhail Gorbachev. Now check this out. This is really great. Huel's bag from when he was in Nashville. That is awesome. 1971 to 1979. Now this is an award given to Huel, and it says this piece of composite trim from the left-hand duck assembly of an F-35A A1 vehicle, the first system development and demonstration joint strike fighter aircraft. The uh, little miniature pop gun of his from when he was a kid. And then here we have his Boy Scout Handbook for Boys, 1957. The California's Gold Hat. And then this is a craft piece made from eggshells. And then these are some of the wooden molds that he used to have on his wall at home and here we have a little uh, little desk I love this read this it says Hauser less than a year before his passing donated his entire archives and volcano house to Chapman University when he died in 2013 Hauser left more than 1 million a house in 29 palms personal belongings and his vast art and artifact collection to Chapman Wow, what a good guy. And then this, this was actually in his house as well. On our way out, I'll show you a picture of it from inside his house. And same with these circuit boards. Now it says here that everything right here are objects from Huel's personal collection of things that he collected over his life and career. Here's a picture of him trying some Bengali food at a Bengali restaurant in LA. And then these are some of the things that he collected over his life. Oh, 
I've walked by there about a billion times on camera. This is when he was on Hollywood Boulevard in Thai Town. Now here is the picture of Huell's Volcano House. There he is. And there it is. And he that's the one that he left to Chapman. It says it was sold back in 2015. Originally listed at $650,000. The Volcano House sold for $750,000 to an anonymous buyer. The proceeds from the sale went towards funding the California Gold Scholarship. Now here's a picture of Huell inside the Volcano House right there. And it says his Volcano House, designed by architect Harold Bisner Jr., was built in 1968, long before Huell owned it. The 1800 square foot space age retreat resembles a flying saucer and looks out over 60 acres of property. It has two bedrooms, two baths, and is located in the desert between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. It is said that the inspiration for the appearance of this house was San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, a nuclear plant in northwestern San Diego County. And there's a pretty great picture of it. it. says he will rarely use the Volcano House before donating it to Chapman University. Before its sale, the university intended the use of the house for retreats for students and faculty, but later deemed the house as far off location. The town Newberry Springs impractical. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much out near Death Valley, I'm pretty sure. You gotta love this touch. And here we go. Here's a wall honoring Huell Scholarship and all the recipients. It says students appreciate those scholarships. Every cent they get helps them meet their goals and their dreams. Here's all the uh, scholarship students and winners from 2012 on. But it looks like they've quit updating it here since 2015. I'll have to ask about that. I just asked and they said yes, they do in fact still do the scholarship, but they just haven't updated the plaque. They said they actually gave out 10 scholarships this year. And this is Louie's book if you want to get Louie's book. And they also have a place here where you can donate to the university the way Huell did. But this is even cooler. They actually have a couple of guide maps if you want to explore Huell Hauser's California Gold or his That's Amazing. So I'm going to grab a couple of these and I'm going to send them out to some of you this month. This houses all the, uh, this houses all the original tapes that Huell Hauser and his cameraman filmed for the show. This contains uh, the raw footage, the B-rolls, the outtakes, the edit masters, and the air masters. All in, uh, a majority of them in digital beta cam format, which is part of the beta tape family of uh, tape uh, formats. But uh, this also houses the production files. I mean, you can take a peek in here too. This houses the production files. As you can see those tan boxes in the corner there. And then the blue boxes uh, next to them on the other side are the, uh, the uh, per personal papers. And so oh, those wow. consist of uh, personal correspondence, uh, photographs uh, that Huell Hauser kept over the years, and uh, you know other uh, fan mail and things like that. The personal, wow. uh, the production files, uh, are all the files consisting of information regarding the making of an episode, such as his editing notes and other uh, you know bits of information regarding like the specifics of an episode. Wow. We you know, have like email correspondence between him and a uh, between Huell and a uh, say an, a local historian or expert. Or it could be, you know, personal correspondence between him and like a producer, like trying to plan out the episode, when to go out to visit. Things wow. Like that, you know, thing, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, but this is the actual archive. Wow. Look at that. The Desert Tower. I mean, yeah, we're, wow. So uh, essentially the way they're, the way these tapes are organized is by, uh, by series and episode number. So each, ep each episode comes with a number. So this is uh, 6002. And that represents, uh, I believe that was uh, season six, uh, episode two. That's how that. That's how you'd read that. Okay. But basically, if you were looking at the shelf right here, um, basically every preceding uh, tape before the actual uh, the oh over here before this uh, every preceding tape before the Air Master sticker right here, that would be all the footage regarding the episode prior to when it aired. Oh, so okay. This is all the B-rolls, the outtakes, edits, and all that stuff. And Very this is the cool. actual tape. Any sticker you see here with an Air sticker on it, this is the actual tape that Huel would give to KCT and actually put it on air. Wow. So, 
But you can see that there's a bunch of air stickers all over the shelves and everything. Yeah, that and is so, so cool. So those air stickers, those are the tapes that actually were used for the show or uh, to air on, you know, on TV and everything. Everything else was all the uh, raw footage and B-rolls and stuff. Yeah, so Huel's, this is a one of, you know, a pair of Huel's hiking boots and stuff like that. We're still trying to go through these items and still organize them and everything. Um, we recently had a storage unit that houses these uh, materials. And uh, we had to move them uh, for, uh, I think, renovation reasons and everything. Right here, check this out. We've got Hewlett SeaWorld, Porto's Bakery, going to Chatsworth. I mean, all the places that, that we go every day on this channel. So great to see it. Well, this has been amazing. I think we're going to get out of here. I wanted to buy a shirt, but they were telling me that one of the stipulations, Huel didn't want anybody to profit off his name. So um, he probably never knew that people would want to walk around with his, his image on a t-shirt, but we all do. So if you come here, you can uh, check out all of his mementos and go get Louie's book and help contribute to Chapman University. Well, thank you for donating your legacy, Huel, so that the rest of us have a place to come enjoy it. Totally appreciate it. And there he is on The Simpsons. And there it is from inside his house. Well, I'd say this is the perfect thing to end on. Right here, one of the uh, hallways as we're leaving is taken up by this big piece of metal. And what this is, is an original piece of the bracketing from the Hollywood sign, the original Hollywood sign from 1923. And of course, this was a gift from the Huell Hauser estate. And there we go, there's a picture of the workers originally creating it and taking those same bracketing pieces up the side of the mountain to create the sign. And there's Huell's piece. All right, so Breck, you told me that you had looked into it and that you found out there's a Jolly Bee in Orange County. So I'm going to treat you to Jolly Bee today. How would you like that? Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's go. We're a little bit concerned because when we got here, the entire parking lot is blocked off on every side. So I'm kind of wondering if they're even open today. Well, we got lucky they are open. We got our food. Breck and I both got the Aloha Yum. I ordered a uh, spaghetti for us to share, and then I'm trying out a hollow hollow. I've never had one, but uh, somebody, when I went here on my last video, said, you gotta try a hollow hollow next time, so I am. And of course, pineapple drink. I'm loving the hollow hollow. It's, uh, it's got shaved ice, different kinds of ice cream, it's got flan, it's got gelatin at the bottom. It's pretty good. Well, Breck, you just ate. You had some of the spaghetti and you had an Aloha burger. How was it? I liked it actually. Uh, the Aloha Burger, you know, it's aptly named. You know, it has, I thought it would go over really well, like in Hawaii and someplace like that. You know, it was a, it was a good juicy burger. It had the pineapple on it, which is an interesting twist. And you were talking about the sauce, and that was pretty good. I like that. Awesome. Thanks for another great meal, Jolly Bee. You never let me down. Well, I mentioned in the live stream last night that some of the packages that some of you sent me got stolen from my building, so. Uh, they made me reorder them, and so we got them delivered to Breck's house. So wh whoever sent this to Jaw, these treats, thank you so much. I don't have a name, but I saw that it was purchased, so thank you. So we're not going to show you all of them that we make. I mean, we'll show you all of them when they're finished, but we're going to start by making my mom's, and these are the colors I'm going to use. Um, I had already talked to her, and I said, would you want this? And she said she did, so uh, we're going to make hers. I bought a really funny Bob Ross shirt. We'll show you as we lay it out. Um, and then we're gonna do like three other shirts after that and we'll just show you those when they're finished. All right, the first one is done and all wrapped up in saran wrap. Then the next one we're gonna do is this one. We figured, you know, there's a lot of ways to screw this up since there's already a tie-dye look to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a the theme of the uh, happy trees and we're gonna do greens. Do a light green, uh, a darker green, and then maybe a yellow if we have to. Well, there we go. We have finished five. We're gonna let them sit for a few hours and then we will uh, rinse them out and we are going to wash them and that'll be it. They'll be done. All right, we're taking Jaw to the park. All right, we made it to the park. I haven't been here yet, but these two have. 
Bye, Ja. Well, we made it over here to the water. And no ducks. No ducks, Jaw. I'm sorry. Over there. All right, we are out of here. Well, we're done. I want to send shout outs tonight to Cherry Laverne, Ralph Alessandra, Barbara Heinlein, Christina Holst, Ashley Moreno. Thank you all for becoming Patreons. And do you want to see a little close up of what we did tonight? There you go. I think that one came out pretty freaking awesome, man. Looks better in person, I think, even. This one, I really like how the uh, the front of the car, the red in the car and every the spiral all kind of connect. And then that one's from my mom. There we go. We did it. Good night, everyone. Ja. Good night. <laughs>